over. You don't get to be here. Where are you? Where you are? Get in there. You jerk. Hi Amanda! Remember when we were back at ASU and we were free casting into all kinds of different things like beans and rice and spaghetti and stuff like that? Remember you got those really freaking cool water castings and they looked freaking amazing and I wanted to recreate doing that but I also didn't remember exactly what combination of things you used. I didn't know if you used hot water or cold water or any of that stuff. I'm gonna try and do that today and you're probably hoping that I get it right. I'm hoping that I get it right. That's really weird. Weird for both of us to be hoping the same thing. Hopefully you're thinking, Lindsay, what the fuck is that glass thing behind you? So I got this really big glass container. You probably can't see it because it's glass. Clearly you can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but you can probably fucking see it because it's glass. Which doesn't make any sense, but that's not the point because it's there. And uh, we're gonna go see what happens when we pour uh, molten metal into it. It's gonna have water in it, obviously. And I was like, hey, why don't I record myself doing that? And then I can let you see and tell me if I did it right. So I have a bunch of scrap silver. I'm gonna pour molten fucking silver into fucking water. See what the fuck happens. You wanna come with me? Time to go do science. We're not science. This isn't science. This isn't even an attempt at science. This is art. I'm gonna go make fucking art. Or a casting room where I can do this so I'm gonna have to improvise this is my backyard this is the crucible that I cured yesterday so the first thing we're gonna do is get it hot once we've got it hot we're gonna flux it just a little bit more and then I'm gonna start melting the silver I got a lot of scrap silver I got pieces that I didn't like anymore so we're gonna use that and we're gonna melt it down and uh, then we're gonna pour it in that water over there gonna be a lot of this now. First we heat the crucible and then we add the silver. Heat the crucible up. Wind, you are not helping. I have to heat this until my flux starts to flow. That's when I know it's gonna be hot enough to start adding the silver. It's too bright out here to see what color my crucible is, otherwise I just wait until it glows bright orange. But it's really bright. So now, I just have to wait until it's really fluxing hot. So it does take a little while before we're actually ready to put the silver in. 
But I think I'm just about ready because I'm starting to see my flux start to turn a little bit more glassy than it was. So when I start adding my silver, I'm going to add little tiny pieces because they're going to melt a lot faster. So I've got a lot of little tiny pieces of scrap here. And I know that normally I would need to use a graphite or a carbon rod. I don't have one of those. So I'm going to have to improvise. I got a little piece of a coat hanger. Deal with it. Okay, so first we have to add just a little bit more flux before we actually add the silver. So here we go. And here we go. That was probably way more than I should have added it the first time. Oh well. Now we can already see it starting to melt. Aw yeah. That's going to take a little while. We're going to keep it going though. You can see my crucible is starting to change colors a little bit. That's all the oxides and the metal burning away. Impurities and stuff. Getting caught in my flux. Speaking of which, I'm going to add a little more. Here we go. Not too much. Don't need very much. You can see it's starting to get liquid. That's just what we want right there. Get in there. Ah, uh, yeah. That's a money shot right there. Get in there. Oh, you. Yeah. We want a little bit more liquid than that. We want it to be able to move around kind of on its own. Ooh, yeah. You get to melt too, buddy. Everything has to be a really nice, even consistency when we start the pour. Otherwise, it's not going to pour very well. We got a lot of slag on top because this is kind of dirty. That's okay. We can kind of get a bunch of that off with our little stir stick here. It's fine. That little piece does not want to melt. Makes me wonder if it's actually silver. Let's see if I can't get it in there. Okay. We gotta keep the torch at a good spot for it because we don't want. Not that silver, so I'm gonna take it out. Otherwise, it should have melted by now. We don't want to boil this because if it starts to boil, we got problems. Oh man, that's not good. Oh. Out of there. You're not silver. You don't get to be here. Or are you? Well, you are. Get in there, you jerk. I can't trust these things anymore. Nope, that's definitely not silver. Problem solved. All right, I'm about ready for the pour. You see, as soon as I take the torch away, it starts to oxidize and get cold. We don't want that. I'm about ready to move over. Do it again. It already starts to cool off and uh, build a skin over top of it. We want to make sure it's this liquid when we pour it. This means we're going to be pouring it through the torch. We don't want that when it gets the water. That's much slack. Alright, here we go. Here we go.
one. This is not what I was looking for. I was looking for a lot more specific shapes than what I got here. What I got was essentially little cornflake pieces, and a lot of little balls, and a couple of big chunks that probably happened right at the end when I did um, sort of a big blob of a, of a bit of silver. So um, probably not gonna save any of this. We're gonna cast it all again. So I didn't get what I was looking for. Maybe I got a little overexcited, poured a little fast. This time I'm gonna go a little bit higher on my pour so it has a little bit more time to get into its shape before it even hits the water. And I'm gonna go a little bit slower as well so maybe I can get tinier dribbles. I don't know, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so we're back in the studio now. Let's see what we got. So recasting the things I got the first time and adding extra material obviously gave me a much higher volume of things, but most of what I got is still this sort of cornflake shape. Casting a little slower, I think, is what gave me a lot of these little fleck pieces. And I did get some sort of weird looking mushroom pieces that are kind of interesting, but none of them are the open bell shape that I'm really looking for. I set aside these little pieces that kind of remind me of sea creatures. If you can think of anything I can do with them, let me know in the comments. Well, I still didn't get what I was looking for. I suspect it's because my water's not cold enough, but if you have any suspicions or if you know what I can do to get the results I'm actually looking for, leave a comment below. I pulled out the best things from the batch, and I'll see if I can do something with them later, but everything else here is going to get recast. So everything I did today is actually covered in this book, Practical Casting by Tim McCrate. I highly recommend getting it if you want to do any of this kind of stuff at home. It covers everything you're going to need, including prepping your crucible and actually casting into water. It's all covered in this book. This isn't a paid endorsement, by the way. I just really, really love this book. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Amanda, I'm going to be waiting for your response.
Manda. 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 Amanda, 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 Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Yeah, I'm gonna be creepy. Amanda, 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 Amanda. Amanda. None of those are gonna be used. It's fine. <laughs>